hey what is up guys it is RB and Hardware with a brand new video today I want to show you guys my latest $933 budget gaming PC with an RTX 2060 graphics card and Intel's new Core i5 11400 processor now in this video I'm gonna show you guys the exact step by step method how I'm putting this PC build together showing you guys all parts I'm using before booting the system up testing out the gaming performance in some of the most popular games now if you follow my steps throughout this video you should be able to see these numbers in your favorite game with this PC now I will be detailing several of the games in the benchmark section that we're going to look at after we complete the the PC build. Now in case you're wondering about the PC parts, what specific components I'm using, you can easily find all that good stuff linked up in the video description. Now before we get on with the build though, hey my name is Robin and on this channel you will find PC building guides. I'm going to show you guys how you can put together your next gaming PCs using both the latest and used PC components. We're also testing out the gaming performance to help you guys figure out what PC parts to pick for your next gaming PC. And so if that is something you're interested in, smash the like button down below and hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. So I like to start with the CPU, RAM, motherboard and storage and for today's build we're gonna go with Intel's new B560 chipset with support for Rocket Lake. This is the Asus Prime Plus and it's got everything a budget oriented gaming PC needs and this includes support for PCI Express 4.0 which honestly maybe isn't going to give most of us that much more performance right now but it is always nice to have these new features in case you plan on holding your motherboard for a long time. Now we're going to pair the B560 with the new Core i5-11400F from Intel coming in at $175. This is a 6 core 12-thread CPU that's got a 2.6 GHz base clock and a boost clock of 4.4. Let's take a quick look at the 11400F gaming performance. Here we see that the $175 processor showing great performance versus the competition, making the 6 core CPU a solid pick for today's budget PC build with target on highest possible FPS. Now as you guys can see we do get a heatsink with the CPU but yeah in all honestly it is terrible. And although we can save a few dollars here by sticking to the stock cooler, I highly recommend you guys looking for something with better cooling performance. And the Freezer Esport 34 Duo from Arctic is one of the best budget coolers in its class with stellar cooling performance, allowing the 11400F to really stretch its legs and reach its full potential. To install the CPU, all we need to do is to line up this triangle with this triangle that we find on the motherboard socket. Open up the latch, then turn the CPU so these triangles match up. Then simply drop the CPU in the socket, move the metal alarm all the way down and the CPU is installed. Now let's go ahead and install the CPU cooler and for that we're gonna need this back plate plus these standoffs and these four thumb screws to secure the cooler. Now all of this comes included with the cooler and the installment is pretty simple and straightforward. Apply a tiny bit of thermal compound. Then line up the cooler with the screw holes. and take the thumb screws and secure the heatsink in a pattern like so. Now we're going to wait with the fans a bit, so yeah that's it for now. Alright so this is the Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB, these two got a speed of 3200MHz and that is the speed that I generally recommend you guys to settle for. 
Now for optimal performance, we want to put these in slots 2 and 4. So open up these latches. And yeah, as you guys can see, they can only go in one way. And that's it. Next up then is we're gonna install our M.2 storage and for today's build I picked the A2000 from Kingston with 480 gigs worth of space and this is good enough to fit quite a few games and you do have the option of slotting in another one later on uh, if you ever are running short. And we find one of these slots down here so take out the screwdriver then slide the A2000 with a 45 degree angle like so. And then we can go ahead and screw it down. And now we can take our motherboard assembly if you like and install it in our case. And in this build I ended up selecting one of my top favorite budget mid tower cases of late. This is the NZXT H510i starting at $66. This is a mid tower case with a solid front panel but it does have ventilation on the side so you don't have to worry about our components running too hot. Now the case has support for hard drives, SSDs and radiators and also long and beefy graphics cards. NZXT is selling two models or two variants. This is the A variant. And this model comes with a small tub and two LED strips that can be customized to your liking with the included software called CAM. Now in order to get into the interior we need to undo this single thumb screw to remove the temper glass side panel. And before we can install the motherboard we first need to go ahead and install the IO shield. And this thing is located inside our motherboard box. And it goes in from the back of the case with these circular audio ports located at the bottom. Now we can finally move our whole assembly into place. And to secure the board we're gonna use the screws to comps provided by NZXT. And with the board installed before we move on to power supply, now is a good time to connect the chassis cables that takes care of the front audio and USB. So let's start with USB 3 and this is what this cable looks like. The connector is located at the right side of the motherboard. Moving on to front audio, and this cable goes to the left side corner. Lastly we have the front panel connector and you find this on the lower right side. With that done and clear guys, let's go ahead and install the power supply and for today's build I chose the Corsair CV550 with 80 plus bronze efficiency certification. A 550 watt is enough for an RTX 3060 graphics card, which yeah could be a great upgrade option later down the road if you feel like you need even more performance. Now make sure that the fan is facing downwards and gently slide the PSU into place and secure it. Break the cables outside of the PC case so that they don't get stuffed in. We're gonna do a couple of cables and wiring now before installing our graphics. And first up we got the 24 pin power for the motherboard and this one goes to a connector that we find on the mid right side. Next up we have the 8 pin power for our CPU and this one goes all the way up to the top left side corner. Now let's finish up with the CPU cooler. So the two included fans attach to either side of the massive heatsink tower. But yeah before we install them, don't forget to connect the CPU fan cable to the CPU fan header on the motherboard first. Then we can attach the fans using these clips just like so. Now for our graphics guys, we're gonna go with the GeForce RTX 2060, this particular model coming from Asus and this is their Strix variant with 3 fans on it. Now based on the touring architecture, the 2060 offers great 1440p gaming and stunning 1080p performance. 4K gaming is also possible to some extent, but yeah 1080p is mainly where the card will shine the most. 
Now, what I particularly like with NVIDIA's RTX lineup is that they support something called DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sampling and this is a technology that increases the graphics performance using dedicated tensor core AI processors. Now DLSS taps into the power of deep learning to boost frame rate and generate beautiful sharp images and the technology is starting to get adopted by many games now which is very awesome to see. A short reminder, as many of you guys know, prices on GPUs are upside down right now, but we are hoping that the situation gets better as we're getting closer to summer. Anyway, plug in the graphics card and take these two dual PCIe cables and plug it into our graphics card just like so. And what is left to do is to flip the case around, whack on the side panel, and we have completed our 933 US dollar budget gaming PC build. Let's fire up some games and let's take a look at how the PC performs. So on your screen now we are looking at the performance numbers I've gathered from today's build and I ended up running 16 games in both 1080p and 1440p resolution with graphics details at high to ultra and as can be seen with the cyberpunk being the only exception reaching 60 fps or more is what you can expect. But yeah, with that said, let's have a more in-depth look at some of the games tested. And first up, we have Metro Exodus and Haunted Edition. And here I'm going for max settings with ray tracing as well as DLS turned on. And this gives us an FPS of 99 FPS. Jumping to 1440p, we saw 57 FPS. Again, using the highest settings in the game. Next up we got Call of Duty Warzone, let's start with 1080p and for graphic settings I ended up almost maxing out the game except for textures I think where I left this one at medium because of the 6GB VRAM buffer. Anyway with ray tracing and DLSS turned on you can expect 136 FPS. At 1440p we saw 110 FPS again with the same settings as before. Moving on into Apex Legends, we're selling for 1080p high settings and we're getting a respectable frame rate of 140 FPS. This is obviously with the unlimited FPS cap activated. At 1440p we saw 119 FPS, so very impressive results. Next up we have Death Stranding starting at 1080p max settings and DLSS set to quality. And with these settings we were able to get 122 FPS. At 1440p we saw 91 FPS on average, again using the highest settings in the game with DLSS turned on. Doom Eternal is next and here I'm opting for the Ultra graphics preset. Let's begin with 1080p. This results in around 152 FPS. At 1440p we saw 92 FPS, again using the ultra settings. Moving on to Overwatch. And as for the graphic settings, I'm picking a mix between high to ultra. And this results in 140 FPS at 1080p. Moving on to 1440p and here we see an, an average of 107 FPS. Cyberpunk 2077, maybe one of the most anticipated games of 2020 and 2021. Let's start with 1080p and I'm going for high with ray tracing set to medium and DLSS set to performance. This results in about 48 FPS on average. But yeah, this is with ray tracing turned on. Stepping up to 1440p, we are almost able to reach the Matic 60fps mark, looking at 55fps. And if we take a look at the settings, you guys can see that I went for the exact settings as before, except for DLSS. We also now have an official Discord server and if you guys want to become a part of the community, ask questions either to me or any of the awesome people on the channel, please go ahead and join the Discord server today. A link to the Discord can be found down below. Now watch either of these two videos and I will see you guys in the next video.